Hi, and welcome to the Market Alert for Tuesday, the 6th of June 2023. So, stocks sink as Appleus fails to impress. So gold up, crypto down. I think Apple um, announced some sort of virtual reality goggles yesterday. I think that's what uh, they're referring to. And uh, remember Google Glass, which were spectacles that uh, had all sorts of uh, technology and wizardry in them as well. So, uh, that's what this is alluding to. Uh, we've got. Um, U.S. stocks were mostly lower after disappointing data on Apple's uh, WWDC, the event where they announced the latest operating systems and so on. So, yeah, market down yesterday. Economic news today, zero, as uh, we looked at yesterday. So let's move on and have a look at the market's reaction to this uh, so-called Apple announcement. Now that the trade, not the trade deal, but the debt ceiling is out of the way, the market's focus is uh, obviously switched. So kicking off with the uh, Dow, we can see here that uh, we moved to the downside yesterday. We had some selling, uh, traded down to the five bar moving average where there is support at this at the moment and the market starting to move higher. In the 30 minute chart, everything was fine until mid morning. And then we started to see uh, the Dow roll over as the New York electronic traders came on. Then the market opened and we see the selling at start. But a bit of a bounce uh, mid-afternoon and then uh, the selling came in and pushed the market down to the DP and also this created yesterday's low where the market has come off uh, overnight. So it's got a chance of making its way back to the upside given that this news is out of the way and there's no other economic news. Uh, so the upside targets for the Dow in the 30 minute chart would be these. It's important on the downside that you also take note that if we go through the close then uh, you have to go back to the daily chart and have a look at uh, these fibs on the downside, which also include the 50, uh, 50 EMA, we've got the 20 moving average and the 200 uh, MA there as well, all around that 50%. If we do get uh, a move to the downside and not a reversal on yesterday's uh, news of a company announcing some uh, virtual reality goggles. Uh, amazing, isn't it? when you look at it that way. So anyway, there is no negative news around at this point. Uh, so the market could actually move to the upside, as I say. And in the German DAX, uh, similar picture. We see the market uh, moving down yesterday and uh, overnight prices trying to move back. We did have a close below the five bar moving average for uh, yesterday. Let me just draw in some fibs on the downside, just in case we take out uh, the low of yesterday. We can see that we've already traded below this in the daily chart. Let's look at this in more detail in the 30 minute chart. And you'll see there that we've come back to this low, we've gone just through it, uh, as you can see there, and uh, making its way back. A very important level, as you know. Uh, so if the market can manage to move to the upside, let's just draw in some upside targets for this market. These would be the upside fibs and areas of uh, resistance. Notice that the 38 ties in with the uh, 20, there's a 50 bar moving average there, that's the blue one. Uh, that needs to be taken out. And also you've got the DP there tying in with the 50% retracement as well, just above it by 12 points. So that's the up and down side. Also watch uh, the market uh, pulling back to uh, there as well, which is uh, about 89, 78, 80%. 89% for the close of yesterday as well. So the market could pull back before it starts to move to the upside there. In the five minute chart of the German DAX, so it was a choppy morning when the market opened. It had absolutely no direction, managed to move up and then just traded sideways. And that's the way it remained. Uh, that was reflected in my trading results, which I'll share with you in just a moment. Market managed to move higher and then we sold off in the afternoon and it's why it's important to keep trading when you have a string of losses market uh, then found support at the s1 uh, where i managed to exit the trade and finish for the day and then overnight uh, you'll see the market has uh, come below the low 
no surprise there. This is another thing to look out for as well that happens. The market goes through the low bounces, but then retests just for good measure and then goes. So it takes out the stops for those who've put their stop just underneath the previous uh, low. And then they take it out and then they move the market back to the upside. So trading results. These uh, show you throughout the day. I started off uh, with a gross profit of um, 138.50. And uh, by the time I'd finished in the morning, I was net 77, having lost 60% uh, when there's 40% uh, loss. And then as uh, we went through uh, lunchtime, after, just after lunch, did another trade. Every time I attempted the long side, it just got stopped out. So I decided that I've got to trade what I see. And uh, each time the market came back to the five bar moving average, it seemed to fail. Let me just go back to that just uh, so you can see it kept coming back and failing so as it did i just resold the market and then you'll see the profits are starting to increase and then on the last one when i got out at the s1 with the profits it was uh, 306.50 for the day and the profit factor had gone from 1.8 to 3.3 which is important thing and also 73 percent to uh, uh, 27 there for the win loss so it's why it's important to go with what you see if you're not uh, having the wins, I think it was three straight losses. And then I said, OK, the market isn't going to go up, despite the fact that the pattern is showing this. I've got to go with the, the flow. And obviously, I find out later on in the evening that there was a disappointment by the market. Well, allegedly, that uh, they weren't happy with what Apple had announced and the market went south. I think it's bigger than that personally. But um, there you go. The point here I'm making is that uh, you can see there that that uh, becomes a small problem because you let the profits uh, run and uh, those losses that uh, we saw stack up throughout uh, the mid morning then become negligible and that's how you end up with the 3.3 um, uh, profit factor there. In the uh, S&P 500 also down looking very strong at the moment still above the 5 MA moving to the upside. Uh, let's just have a look at um, the monthly chart of this. Uh, bit more time on this one don't normally have a look at this so you can see that this is attempting to get back to the all-time highs as well uh, currently 62 percent uh, retracement there from the all-time high uh, back so far so it's always interesting to look at these longer term charts they certainly give you a bigger perspective of what's going on than uh, you'll get any in any other smaller time frame and it allows you to emotionally trade with where the longer term trend is as well which you can see is to the upside there so the 30 minutes uh, for yesterday was sideways all the way through the electronic. It was a lot of indecision for a while. And then, say, the Apple thing that dominated brought the market down. It's uh, been retested back to the close, just above the low. And then the market uh, at the moment stuck at uh, the DP for the S&P there. In the FTSE 100, uh, also uh, moving higher to begin with, then down for the day, but staying above the five bar moving average and finding support at 38% in the overnight on the daily chart there. Now you can see we didn't do a lot. We came off the close and it just got quieter and quieter. The Dow kicked in the BRN, which is the 7,600. Then we went through that and then down to the close and low overnight. We made that low and we managed to come back to the 50 where we're now overbought and uh, crossed over and also uh, sideways to lower. In the currencies, uh, down yesterday for the GBP JPY in the 30 minute chart, so just cascaded lower, as uh, you can see there with the Dow, uh, accelerated once the, that kicked in, uh, stopping at the BON, well, it's actually stopping at uh, the S3, uh, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it stopped at the S3. Again, 90 plus percent of the time, the market will stop in this area. We then see the market reverse back up to the previous day's low which is Friday's back above the 200 MA but uh, as soon as we get there we're overbought uh, we've got uh, some selling coming into the market and down we go and then uh, overnight uh, we've seen or the Asian session uh, where the markets back above the BRN close and uh, just struggling a bit there with the DP we've also got that 200 MA in the way there as well in the pound 
uh, down and then back up as uh, the dollar started out uh, yesterday morning when we looked uh, gaining strength overnight. The pattern changed and it uh, moved lower. So that sent the pound back up as you'll see there as the Dow moved lower. I see this, this does, the pound wouldn't be affected by Apple announcing uh, some crummy goggles, um, you know, that uh, are going to change your life. Um, so it, it just wouldn't be the case. So something else uh, was going on yesterday, whether it's behind the scenes, I don't know. But anyway, the pound managing to move higher overnight, struggling a bit at the moment, uh, trying to stay above uh, yesterday's high. Speaking of the dollar, you can see there that uh, we moved up yesterday morning. We then came back and overnight also uh, there is uh, a bit more weakness in the US dollar there as I record. Which uh, brings us to the metals. Uh, yesterday, silver trading down to uh, 62.78 which you can see they're managing to move to the upside before the close of the session. As uh, you'll see there, we've got the shakeout at uh, the S2, and then we see uh, the news there. That was uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, the PMI numbers, and then uh, the market uh, moving up, as you can see, double topping more or less uh, overnight there, back 89%, 90%, just shy of 100% to, to that high. I know that because uh, the green, the pink line is still there. We've also come back down to the close. We've got a cluster of uh, averages there at the moment. So the 200, 20 and uh, 50 all there. So it's an important area for silver to actually hold. In the gold market also showing that uh, retracement coming back to 89% uh, retracement yesterday. You look at that in more detail in the 30 minute you see the the retest here with the volume coming in, that's an 89% uh, retracement. Not only that, but you've got a uh, first test of it there, then the reaction when the Dow opens and the PMI and the market then trading up to the 200 MA, which you can see is causing a bit of a resistance at the moment, as is uh, yesterday's high, which the market will need to get through uh, to continue back up in uh, the daily chart there, where it's also found resistance at the 20 bar moving average, so not a surprise. And this is why it's important to look at all time frames, and uh, you can then see why a market is struggling. If it's not struggling in a one minute chart, and you're thinking, well, why is it stopped there? It's in no man's land. If you go back to the other chart uh, time frames, look through them, and you will find the reason why the market uh, has actually stopped in that particular area. And the gold silver ratio yesterday, uh, silver weaker than. Uh, gold but overnight uh, silver just gaining a bit of an edge there as the gold silver ratio is moving back to the red side so again we'll just have to wait and see but today there's no news no economic news the market's gonna have to make its own direction and uh, find you know either send the bots out roaming through twitter or whatever to find something to move the markets but otherwise um we'll just have to wait and see what happens and like yesterday i should trade what i see and if it isn't working out the one way, it's because there is a dominance in the market and then uh, trade it accordingly. So, yeah, let's see what happens. OK, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.